are going to trade our sorrow tonight. Amen. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. Wanika bulungi nkulabe Ne aba rande ndaba be basingo kuzina ne atabalamu bache kute kute chichi ogomo yotu kugobere wabweru obutayaka latendereza mukama ya era banaye faba na bera sinira katonda kubanga tulina sete sicho gambo moyo gwa butazina mu fire fire aba wano okabe bazinira katonda ze simanyi mu chachi zamwe Gamba, I am trading my sorrow. I'm trading my sickness. I am going back with my healing. Katiba Mekaba Gamba, and Tinsi Jagala Nyumba. Kakati, Ogena could take our one so we got good day in Yumba. Okuzina Koko Kugendo could determine in a salayamo somba over to Chicola. Are you ready? Bamekaba Gamba, and Tinsi Sente, that is the Tessin Nema Zamo. Zenyuma tenema Wabula wenzi jamu kuzini na yesu Kumanga ye ya wimpa Ama zina gange gamu guwana Hallelujah Sicho Ama abu simi bazini na mukama Ama ganga tuigechi nontifaba ino zini na katonda na manjiga fegona Sicho Are you ready? Kume nga lobot I'm trading my soul
When you make a joyful noise to God, we are going to do one more joyful sound to the Lord. Are you ready? Yes. Come and give him a shout. Say thank you, Lord, Lord. For, such for such an encounter tonight. Le Prandesia, move it and you come to Joma Gambe. You get a big gamble. Joma Gambe, you come and quit us. Chorale, don't call it that. Kaungeza, Kenja, Ulo, Kesi, Funanga, Yombula, Mwange. Waba, Yombulu, Ndibu, Nagwe, Nari, Mfunye. Le, don't call it that. Wevali, yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. We welcome you to Miracle Christian Fellowship Ministries. Our pastor is in the house. Let us give him a hand. Today is a special service. We have a guest. We, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We welcome people that are joining us from different ministries. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Our senior pastor is Pastor James Victor Lubwama. And our mission is to minister love in a hurting world. We are happy to see you without taking a lot of time. We are going to put our hands together and welcome Pastor James Victor Okay, you may take your seat. It's great to be in the presence of God this Because God is the source of everything. The source of life. In case you sense death. In any part of your life. Just take calm. The word of God. The word, the word of God is going to bring life. The word of God resurrects. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome each of you in the presence of God officially. This place is called Miracle. Christian, Christian Fellowship Church. Church. We believe in miracles. And our greatest, greatest miracle. Is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The second greatest miracle. Is our salvation. Knowing the Lord. Is our second greatest miracle. Hallelujah. So I welcome you. I believe you are going to get. Many miracles tonight. Today, we have a, a, a guest, Dr. Dr. John Mulinde, John Mulinde of World Trumpet Mission. World Trumpet Mission. He's going to be here ministering, speaking in your life by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Not only that, 
will have pastors from this area and I've been looking up and down trying to search whether they are here yet. I think they are still on the way. Our pastors in Kasanga Town Council, some of them are going to be with us. We thank God for that opportunity. Amen. Amen. We have sons and daughters of this ministry. Some are coming. Some are here. We are blessed to be together. I believe God is going to change your life. I know Dr. John Mulinde. Dr. John Mulinde. Have ever ministered under him? As a pastor. In the city church. World Trumpet Mission. A world trumpet mission. The first one in Kampala. In the middle of the city. I was one of the senior pastors. He was an apostle. By then. Praise the Lord. So when I will come here for him here for the first time. It is a blessing in my life. And even for you. Amen. 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 He's still on the way. But I believe he will be here shortly. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to honor the presence of the pastors in this place. And the elders. The leaders in different departments. Can we please clap and welcome them? Amen. Amen. If you are seated outside, you have screens. Don't worry. The anointing is all over the place. All over the place. And the angels are around us. You are not going to miss anything. Amen. Amen. I request ushers in case someone mentions that I'm a pastor. We have their places in the front. Amen. Amen. Okay. And before the apostle arrives, we want to do our things. I want to give an opportunity to those um, who pledged. Actually, in the morning service, I asked for the pledges, and the, somewhat the pledges fulfilled. Now I want to ask if you have a pledge, please come on honor before we interrupt the program. When the apostle arrives, I'm not going to stand here. He's going to stand and talk up to the end. So I'm here to do that and to uh, welcome the pastors. Pastors from Sanga Town Council. You are requested to come in front. We have your seats in front. Praise the Lord. Amen. And again, if you were a visitor here, please put up your hand. One welcome you in a special way. Okay. Okay, you are welcome. We only have one guest and visitor. Stand up for recognition, please. You are welcome. You are welcome, sir. You're welcome, our sister. Amen. 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 Yes. Praise the Lord. Mr. Chirinya, you're welcome, Dr. Kaiga. Mr. Chirinya, you're welcome, Dr. Kaiga. Mrs. Integan San, uh, Joe, Brother Joe, and Brother Joe. 
and the wife Susan everyone but I can't mention Dr Katumba and Dr Miriam Dr Katumba and Dr Miriam we are very happy to see you all we are very happy to see you all we are very happy to see you all okay let's go on let's go on with our business here in case you are a visitor we believe in doing our things we don't come here to listen to the word of God only we don't come here to listen to the word Are you in the way of faith to lose? Amen. Amen. Maybe Osanga. you can view some of the things we do. Ah, to so look where I go, I'm going to be to be to call one. You can take it into a month to a And you understand that if a person comes here to fundraise, it is used for something. What Saba, we do? What we do? A minimum jet to call a project says a fee. Yes. Kwa gida wa bino nyia. Okay, if you came with your pledge, please. We are constructing the slab and we are going to construct and the money is here. If you pledge, please bring it and add it onto what we already have. Please, let's be fast. Let's be fast. He won't be here so late because we sent a lead car. We don't want him to suffer with the traffic jam. So any time we we'll be here. And I can't talk those things when the visitor is here. Okay. That is what we do. That is our parking up there. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think you know. We are showing the visitors. Not, not you. Because you always see those things. And we are not selecting money for that. Because we did those things. Some of those projects were for last year. 2022. Yes, you did a lot. May God richly bless you. Thank you for prospering this place and blessing the body of Christ with such nice things. Amen. Amen. For your information, when the apostle comes, he'll tour around and see those things and then come and minister to you. Because by the time he finishes, you won't have time to move around. I want to thank you. Why? It has been your money, our money, We don't have sponsors from abroad. But it is our money. By the grace of God. It is our vision. It is our money. It is your money. It is your sacrifice. That's why I always thank you for trusting me. With your funds. Trusting me with your funds. Thank you so much. If you didn't trust me. You wouldn't give me that much. Amen. Amen. I know you are learning something. We didn't wake up with millions to do that. No. Step by step. Not all at once. But step by step. And each miracle, each step has been a miracle. Thank you for buying land. Thank you for building. Supporting the work of God. I want to thank you for supporting the work of God. You didn't get tired of me. I, I've been asking you for this money all this time. And you see it. It is good now that you're seeing it put at work. It is interesting. 
It's great to have that. Chenyuma okubana ebintu webitu. Chikulu nyo kubana ebintu webitu. We thank God so much. Era mukama tumwe bazanyo. Bagenda okolo lugudo la Colas. By the time they are going to tarmac our road. Tenga Kampala ya tokadda. Kampala will already be here. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Tubazanyo mukama. And I thank you. Era na mwembe bazanyo. Even that plot belongs to you. You bought it last year. It was expensive. But you trusted me with your money and we paid it off. That is our church. Amen. Amen. Where we are seated now. That road goes down. We have another parking. parking. That parking has been constructed this year. Thank you for trusting us with your funds. We give God the glory and honor. Amen. The lights and the parking. When we come to night services, you can't fear. You park and move. Parking, it's okay. You parking, I know. Tanga. Because we have lights. Kwanza wali yechi tanga, yechi mala. There is light. Wali yechi tanga la. Amen. Amen. That is what you've done. Ebi bi mukose. That is what you've managed to do. Ebi musabu dokola. We decided to change the color of the church out, out, outside. Tuwa salo kuchusa kala yekani salangi. Thank you. We did it. Amen. To God Amen. be the glory. Now we are there. We are trying to construct new toilets. toilets flushing toilets. Flushing toilets. Yes. Around there we are going to put something I'll tell you when it is done Amen. Amen Mr. Kabuka, we appreciate all the hard work. May God bless you. Mr. Isaac, the architect, thank you so much. Mr. Isaac, architect, now we talk about Zanyo. Engineer Bashel and the group. Engineer Bashel, we group you. Thank you for the work which you do. We will enjoy your company more. Go go more, Kola. Amen. Amen. That is our water. I go get my zigafe. Our water from underground. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. So, uh, whenever I stand here to ask for money, there is a reason why. We ask for money. No one is going to do those things for us. And your 10,000 matters a lot. If I add mine, if I add, add mine, now no gatako, you also add yours. Then, then we get what we want. Praise the Lord. That's why I request you. Please, if you came with your pledge, you will not get any other time. Because we have not invited the apostle to solicit funds for us. We have called him to bless us. And we also bless him physically. Amen. Amen. Great men of God. All men of God. They come with blessings. The Bible says. Blessed are the feet of the one that comes to preach the good news. The gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Amen. Those people Amen. come with blessings. As Christians, we have to be wise and tap those blessings. I want to thank the, all the marrieds and everyone who has been, who has done his part to welcome the apostle. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
But I know the secret that there is something which is deposited on your account. We have a spiritual account. Whenever we give to God, we give to the men of God, we support the ministry in any way. The blessings, whatever we get is deposited on our account. Praise the Lord. Amen. So at this moment, if you came with your pledge, please put up your hand. We want to receive the pledge. Amen. Amen. And if you came with any offering, I think that we take the baskets around. Please bring all the baskets. People will not get up because the visitor is almost here. So let's start with this side. God bless you. Give your offering. If you have an offering, raise your hand and they will reach you. The apostle is not so far away from us. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank God. I'm going to speak this to teach others. I wouldn't, I wouldn't speak it out. Brother Joe, thank you for, 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 for showing us. An example. That is how you can pick a blessing from men of God. Brother Joe is going to fill the fuel that is going to fill the car of the apostle. Amen. Amen. He has done it, but he has done it for us. The apostle cannot forget us. Amen. So I have a coupon and a petrol station around the corner. I'll lead him and tell him and the blessing of God will come upon you and your family. Thank you for welcoming our visitors in a special way. Praise the Lord. I'm touched. May God bless you. And I'm so happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please be quick. We have a few minutes to testify. I'm still inviting pastors forward. Kindly, if you're a pastor seated at the back, we have your seat saved for you. Here. We have a seat saved for you at the front. I ask you to raise your hand if I told you a pastor. So that we shall bring you clothes. May God richly bless you as you come. Amen. Brethren, don't overstay with the basket. If the basket is meant for offering, drop your offering there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you haven't given your offering, raise up your hand. So they'll reach you where you are. How about that? 
you have a hot testimony I may give you an opportunity before the apostle comes and you, you come and burn us or you consume us with it but please don't burn us praise the Lord you have a testimony you will share it with us those uh, ushers are in charge of offering some man asked for an envelope uh, give it to them and they write the reason for their seed and for what it is intended for praise the Lord Amen Ashers, we appreciate the work. Thank you for being well dressed. May God give you more money. Those outside, have you offered? media team thank you for being smart may God bless you thank you for giving us uh, bringing us glory and honor the security crew you could touch you another time they have a security, uh, the security. security. Uh, the, 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 the professional ones, they are the best dressed. Oh, the, the ones in these dresses. Mm. They are really smart. Like other group of the security went to pick the apostle. Amen. Amen. Our mothers, we are very happy to see you. Pastor Luama's mom is here, very smart. <laughs> She's smartly dressed and seated well. She's a pure Muganda woman. Ah, <laughs> She's from the Mamba clan. That's one thing I know. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we done? The apostle is closed. I want to uh, conclude. God is good. You're a pastor. Pastor, we honor you. This is the house of your father. The one who called you, the one you serve. So you have a special place here. Amen. Amen. All the pastors. Mama Nachire, please come back. Don't overstay and don't uh, leave because someone. Someone gave me your message. I would like to request Sister Jennifer to bring it. I carried it in the morning, but I forgot and went back with it. Mama Nachire, please don't overstay wherever you go. The spirit may change his mind. Someone online sent her a message. Thank you so much, brethren. Brethren online, you say that that lady she is of slow speech. I've sent her 80,000 shillings. So they sent me the money. And I said, How can I give her uh, 80,000? So I topped up the 20k. Now it's a round figure, 100k. I learned something. I'm, I'm going to start mimicking her or talking like her. Hey, you benefit by doing so. You receive empathy. Praise the Lord. Please bring me the envelope. Mama Nachire's envelope. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you done with the, uh, collecting offerings? Thank you. 
right now i'm going to receive some of your testimonies and I know the God who created an elephant is the God who created a hyena. A hyena. In PC, they are not equivalent. They are all creatures of God. But one is bigger than the other. We don't despise testimonies. But on a day such as this one, sure, some of those testimonies of how God saved you from stepping on an insect, please don't give that we thank one. God and we are going to clap our hands to God for all the testimonies. We thank God for His works in our midst. some unique, educative, Testimonies which encourages which reveals the greatness of God in a special way. Which can encourage which can encourage our sisters and brothers to wait upon the goodness of the Lord if you are convicted to come and give it this is the time remember don't tell us the whole story but tell us what God did it will encourage your sister your brother put up your hand boldly and say I am the one I'm waiting for your hand please raise as many hands as possible and I'll choose no consider check Anton. Will you be ah. able to use a few minutes, Django? Come fast. He's bringing an elephant, not a hyena. Njagalanjovu, so simple. An elephant, not a hyena. So Some people are now a fidgeting. Huh? I can't stand there. You can't stand there. You can't stand there. You can't stand there. You can't stand Praise God, brethren. I'm Nabatanzi Amina. I'm so blessed to be in this place. This is my mother To be in this place. We are going to be in this place. We are going to be in this I want to thank God. I want to thank God. That I was able to get uh, what I purposed to get. I've been working for close to three, four years now. But I wasn't seeing what I was working for. I'm a hustler. Some people call it kuyidiba, hustling. But I was not seeing the fruit of my work. I would come back home with money. Then when I check in my bag, I don't see the money. But I came here on Wednesday and I narrated that audio to the pastor. Wednesday, that very day, I got three million. I spoke to myself and said, Lord, let me test this. I'm from church. I went home and I went home. With those three millions. That man spent three days in my bag. He didn't get lost. It was not subtracted because the enemy used to pick money from my bag. If it's one million, you find when something has picked 300,000. They used to pick, that spirit used to pick 300,000. And yet this money was not mine, it was capital from work. So I was, work, I was always working to clear that money that would get lost. But I really want to thank God, because from that day, so what day, to clear uh, the car payment. 
project. And this another project that I'm doing. Amen. Amen. Clap Amen. your hands to Jesus. Let me welcome all the pastors from Kasanga to Town Council. Let's clap for them. We are blessed to have you. You are welcome. You are welcome. We are so happy to have you here. It means a lot. This is great. I know even God, God in heaven, is very happy. Let's There's a scripture that says that if we are in one accord, then they shall know that we are his disciples indeed. Amen. Amen. These are servants of God. They are doing the work of the ministry. In Kasanga, town council. Different places. We have one mission. You people. Even if you have a lot of anointing. You can't pastor. This Actually, town council. Town council, you never want. Unless you want people, you want people to go to hell. Mpozi kongo ya galaba antu wana ba gende mugeena. Can't pastor them all. Bonna to sobo la kuba somba wamo. You can't. Tetsi sobo ka. We need many churches. Tueta gama kani sa manji nyo. Different churches. Ama kani sa anga ganja wulo. Working together. Tuvenga tukolera wamo fena. Because we have one God. Kuvanga tuina katonda yomo. One mission. No, 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 Maybe when you got saved, you thought that you came to church to receive miracles. No. God will perform miracles for you. But God wants you to go to heaven. And I always remind you that Jesus is soon coming back. We have to work out our salvation with fear. Much as we get nice things, all the nice things will remain here. You will not take even a car. I always tell my wife that God has blessed us, but we have to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Because we are not going to take anything. Praise the Lord. So our Hope, faith, trust is in the Lord. We shall enjoy blessings in this life. Don't put your life, your faith, in these tangible blessings. The Lord will leave you. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank God for the Men of God. And I want to thank you for, for coming. It was a short notice. But thank you. Honoring it. Amen. Uh, we are still waiting for the apostle to arrive. Amen. Um, Lillian. Lillian. You are supposed to stand there and welcome the visitors. Stand with the chief usher and welcome the visitors. Amen. Amen. Please don't feel bad. Allow the pastors to drink some water. You're not a visitor, please. Allow them to sip some water. You'll drink afterwards later. You'll drink back at home. <laughs> if not, 
wali 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 wali. You can go outside their canteens, you can buy a drink. Another testimony. If you have a testimony, put up your hand. Don't fear. We only had three pastors. Now we have many, many others pastors added to us. The blessings. Yes. Thank you. This envelope. The person sent me to give it to you. You don't know this person, they're strangers. I've never seen this person also. I've not seen them before. Please don't thank me. Maybe they are watching. It's a woman, don't worry. God is saying you don't worry. Never mind. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's our envelope. I would have given it to her when it was just the two of us. But pastors, we are teachers. I'm trying to teach you that when you receive somebody's thing, make sure that you give it out. If you eat someone's money, you take a curse. You rip a curse. If you eat ministry money, you reap a curse. Amen. Amen. I've seen God working in my life, but I learned a secret, a secret of being faithful with God's money. I separate God's money from my money. I separate what is God is with mine. Starting from land. Yes. All the land here is in the names of this ministry. Not my names. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I have my things. I'm your neighbor. I help you <laughs> to keep your land, to keep your property. Even if God tells me to leave this place, I leave your ministry because I don't own anything here. Number two. All the vehicles I have are mine. You only have one car. The truck. The one for which you bought new tires recently. That truck. Which I, for which you repaired the tires. It's yours. It is registered in the ministry name. The buildings, all of them here, they are for the ministry. All these carpets are yours. All these golden chairs are yours. All these things are yours. My things are up yonder, the other side. My car that I came driving is mine. <laughs> So, if I pass you by, it's not, our, it's not the church cars, they, they are not yours. They all belong to me as an individual. Amen. Amen. I would like to thank God for that. Because he has been faithful. I want to encourage you. Maybe, maybe I'm one of those that are testifying right now. Uh, Paul, Paul, but then Sababakuru Abam receiving Abam receiving. Let the ushers go and receive them the visitor from the other side. Let them go. Because the time is ready for speaking. Let me take this time to testify. Because some of you are afraid to testify. Mine is not as hot, but I have a microwave. I always go back and warm it up and take it out. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. I am a born again. I have, uh, before I got saved, I used to 
Uh, my mother showed me the Anglican religion. So I grew up in that religion. She always took me to church. I would like to appreciate her so much. Because she was a minister. For all her years. Back in the Anglican church. She was an usher in the church. And we always followed her to church. So I also got to a ministry. I was a singer. I always took the pulpit. I started ah, rather ascending levels. Eh, I ascended levels. Paka, paka, paka. All the way to the Mwamu top. Kengulu. Praise the Lord. Amen. I requested the apostle. Mm -hmm. That you don't want him to be caught in the traffic. You don't want him to be caught in the traffic. Now these things, sometimes the people misunderstand them. They think it is government related. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. But government. it is not government related at government all. The government is you and I. The Sidina, uh, yeah. Sidina Kada, and I've never shaken, uh, shaken the president's hand. Even the spies that are here, you know it well. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anointing. But the anointing crafts many people. Praise the Lord. Amen. The anointing that God has given me. Has been able to craft different people. And those people minister. Amen. Amen. Now, let me go back to the cause. Amen. I was a child. I was born again. After getting saved, I was a singer. At the Namirembe Cathedral. And accepted Jesus. I didn't come to get saved. I just visited the Born Again Church. But let me skip that part. This is what I believe. After I got saved. I didn't know that I had a calling. But one day when I was really being stubborn, I had refused. The prophet, by then it was called KPC. It was called KPC by then. It is Watoto Church Currently, Central. the Watoto Church Central. I was in the congregation. And then there is a Jew. A, a, a servant of God was a Jew. He came slowly and tapped me. And told me, Nangamba. you were still disobedient. God called you. And you don't want to do what He called you to do. He prayed for me. I continued. He continued. He went back. So I left the church immediately. Said, it means that wherever I go, God, you always seek me out. I didn't get saved to be a minister. I just got saved. That's all. Slowly, God, I was besieging me on all ends. So I did everything that I did for all those years. I've ministered in different places. I was once a pastor with the Apostle Melinde. I was reminding the, the apostle recently. I went to his lunch hour. I don't remember what was in the lunch hour. I don't remember what was in the lunch hour. I came to fellowship. I sat behind there. He preached. After preaching, we left. We left. So he ran quickly, very fast to the doorway. When he shook my hand and he greeted me, he said, God is telling me that we are going to minister together. I said, Apostle, but I don't know you. I said, we well, shall see about it. I left and I hid for three months. I didn't come back. I didn't go back. 
I said I wanted him to forget about it because uh, that was the nearest lunch hour to my, my place the no workplace. I was doing a certain job I was selling uh, I was a salesman in the electronics shop there around the Lumu street so I was feeling bad because I was not attending lunch hour fellowships you know he, he just made me lose my peace and he told me those words I thought he had forgotten so I went back I didn't lift up my eyes I enjoyed his gospel and his preaching. When I was leaving the church, as you quickly escaped, after that service, he went around and went to the door and again. He said, Brother, did you forget about me? I said, This man. I said, Now. On a serious note, I'll come. We talk. That is how. I started the ministry. Okay, ministering under World Trumpet Mission. World Trumpet Mission. The Lord used me under the guidance of Apostle Mlinde. What I cannot forget. What I cannot forget. The Lord came back and told me your time here is up. Your time of being here is up. And I want to thank God. I went to my boss and I told him that God is saying something. Give me a leave for one month. He gave it to me. After a month, I came back. I told him also God is telling me some complicated stuff here. So I told him what he was saying. He said, let's continue praying about it. I want to thank God. He first released me for some time. And I told him, Apostle, you know, if, I do, if, if I'm not sure that I heard well, I will come back. Because I, I really saw that I had broken his heart. But ever since that time, God is good. I didn't go back 26 years now. Now, after 26 years, 26 years have passed now. This is the first time for him to visit us here. He has never been here. This is the very first time for him to come here. That is why I see that as a great, great miracle. Amen. 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 God is good. He's here. Let's welcome him to come and tell you. That is the end. My story. My story has ended here. Amen. Amen. I ask let us scream out loud and stand up and welcome the visitor.
You may take your seat in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for our visitor, Dr. Dr. John Mulinde. John Mulinde is in the house. Mwalimu nyumba. We are blessed. Tuliba mukisa nyo. We are so blessed. To have him here. Okubera nga aliwa no nafe. He's a great man of God you. Msaja wa katondo wa amanyi mumu manyi. You know very well. Muchimanyi bulunji nyo. Amawanga manji gamuyaya anira. Many nations are desirous to have him. Because of the message which God gave him. Kulobu baka katonda wa yamusamu. But we are blessed. Nefe tuliba mukisa. To have him here. Kubanga wanotumulina munyumba. Amen. Yes. Wow. Let's allow him to relax. This is going to be our program. Are the leader of all the pastors in this area. The one who is our over the one who is our leader is here with us. And he shall be the one who will come. The apostle to come and minister in his area. You know, even though we have this place, we believe in leadership. Because this is not our house. This is a house of God. Amen. This is a house of God. Yes. At this moment. And the Mrs. Pasaluwama is coming. Amen. Amen. They, are no, they know each other for a while. They've been knowing each other for some years. A long time. We've been hustling and working in town. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, at this moment, we don't want to waste any time. I want to welcome the head of all the pastors to come and welcome the apostle. He's not yet here. Maybe you've never seen him before. But you've seen him today. He's the leader. We entrusted him. And the heavens confirmed it. And we obey him. Praise the Lord. So, I saw that it would not be fair for me to welcome the big man. Praise the Lord. And before he invites him, I request that he will first introduce to us the pastors to introduce them to the apostle. They may, may bypass you in town and you may not feel, uh, you may feel to understand them. Everyone he introduces, you stand for recognition and the apostle will see you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, Bishop James Victor Luwama. Bishop James Victor Luwama. Thank you so much. Why do I call him our father? Because they're the people who came first in this area. By the time we came, there four the principalities that were governing in this area. Therefore, sir, I honor you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. For me, and for the body of Christ in Nangabo. May the God increase your grace and the blessing. And all the ministry of Miracle Church in Nangabo. May God bless you. Dr. John Mulinde. I am one of your followers. And I've been talking to Sister Nita. 
why did you deny me? Mosee, because I've been coming to his office many times, many times. Asking that you visit us in Nangabo. But when Mosee told me that I'm the one who is going to welcome you, I said, let me say this. Allow me to say it. I've been coming in so many conferences that were called Africamp with Solomon Assembly and I loved you and for that reason I think it was 2015 to 2016 you challenged us that for you you had come to learn all this what are you going back to do and in 2016 through the message that you gave to us in Africa I started the old of the, the altar of the pastors in and it is still going on. And there was an e Francis Semogere about that. I think even Francis Semogere is talking about it. And one day, sir, I ask that you visit us in Nangabo. We are hungry for you. Come and set up the fire that you started. Because I always tell the pastors that we talk about the altar. But the one who got the vision yeah, for the Apostle Dr. John is Apostle Dr. John Mulinde. Hey, so, no? I request you from here. If I come to your office, sir, go office wakade, when you have some time, o janga please hey. come, my father. Uh, Allow me, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. Let the pastors that have come with stand up. They are among the few pastors that are sub county. Or Kasanga Town Council. And our father, James Victor, he said the place is very small. We would have invited the whole of Nanga. Bishop, Bishop, we are uh, organizing to appreciate you as pastor for the good things that you have done for the body of Christ in Nangabo. And before the end of this year, we are going to come to you. Uh, just like the saying is. This is my wife, Frida Sebufu. Aha. Uh -huh. Oli Pastor John Big Matovu. That is Pastor John Matovu. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel Insubuga. That is Pastor Emmanuel Insubuga. Ono Yemuchala Emmanuel Insubuga. This is Mrs. Emmanuel Insubuga. Ono Pastor Dr. Henry Mugerwa. This is Pastor Dr. Henry Mugerwa. A Pastor Damba Samuel Salongo. This is Pastor Damba Samuel Salongo. Pastor Judith Nakaswa. Pastor Judith Nakaswa. Atambu deno mukuba sumba wa junior pastors. Simu mani na yenga wakola na yenga. With one of her junior pastors, I don't know Aha. him, but the minister to Pastor Richard Sentongo. Pastor Richard Sentongo. Pastor Rich Mondison. Pastor Rich Mondison. Aha. Pastor Tony. Lukanga. Pastor Tony Lukanga. Pastor Henry Muyinda. Pastor Henry Muyinda. Pastor Ricky Cosmas Vasarirwa. Pastor Ricky Cosmas Vasarirwa. Pastor Justin Mugerwa. Pastor Justin Mugerwa. Pastor Captain Abbas Matovu. Pastor Captain Abbas Matovu. Apostle Geoffrey Angwako. And Apostle Geoffrey Angwako. Abasu uh, Amukade Wange Sebo. My father, sir. And all the pastors and all the ministers in this place. I request that we stand up on our feet and honor the anointing that is upon our Father, Dr. John Mulinde. Dr. John Mulinde. The man who has made a difference in the nation of Uganda and in so many other nations. Let him come to speak to us. Please do not let him come to us. Let him come and speak and Let us put our hands together to the doctor. and welcome. Apostle John Melinda from World Trumpet Mission. From World Trumpet Mission. Aje, I am getting Let him come and speak to us. We welcome you, sir. Yeah. Yeah.
Hallelujah. 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 HT one ten the Renat Vizari Mukama Katanda. The return of the glory and honor to God. Praise the Lord. We are very delighted to be here. And you have welcomed us so well. It has been long since I last had such. Give, give a high five to your neighbor and take your seats, please. I give all the glory to God to be here with you. And I want to thank my brother for the warm welcome and also to bring together other leaders. I didn't expect that. I feel, I feel so honored. And I really want to thank God for all that you have put together. Maybe before we go further, I want to just introduce the people I've come with. Let me just ask them to stand up. Amen. Amen. These uh, people that stand with me in prayer and in serving the Lord, I will not go into mentioning their names. But I wonder whether you can see them there. I don't know why. <laughs> but they are those that make me what I am. Amen. Amen. I just, maybe I'll just mention their names very quickly. I have Apostle Emmanuel Seriange. I have Mary. Mary. Mary works with us in the office at the Prayer Mountain. I have Anita Wanyana. Anita Wanyana Yoyo. That's in my office. I have Bridget here. Bridget Wuyo. And Brenda Quizera. Brenda Quizera. And my young apostle there, Apostle Tonya Bruce. No, Tonya Bruce. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Mutubeko. Bishop Luwama. Omulabi de Ziruwama. I had you being called Bishop. For to me, you are my brother from forever. Nienzo limgana go emi rembe jona. When I was starting the work at uh, William Street, where we had the lunch hour. I called my brother and said, will you come and work with me? I need somebody who can stand with me as we establish this work. And he agreed to do that. Amen. We, we worked together for quite some time until the Lord took him away to start the work here. But those days are still very precious in my memory. We fought, we fought many, many battles, including our premises being locked up because we didn't have money to pay rent every now and then. We and I want to say again, thank you, my brother. And 
again I want to commend the beautiful joy and warm welcome that you have given to us. I'm sure heaven has noted it. And I pray that God will minister to us all as we fellowship here together. Let me ask you to go with me to the scriptures. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let us pray. Yes, una jana yogera na bo. Naga matempere do buenza bonda mugulu kune konsi. Kare mugene mufura manga gono abai girizwa. Ngam batiza ukui ingira muri njali achita fano mana no moyemutu kuvu. Ngam bai girizo kuku atabi na biembala gira mwe. Era lava nzendi wamu na mwe na kuzona oktu semenembe jinori jire guao katu sabi. Father, in the name that's above every name, we come before you. We want to thank you for the wonderful gift that our Lord Jesus is to us. Thank you also for the gift of life. Thank you that we, we are gathered here today in his precious name. And now, Lord Almighty, we ask you to minister to us by your Holy Spirit. Father, give us understanding. Give us revelation. And give us wisdom that we may serve and bear fruits and may our fruits abide. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. If someone has been with you for some time, and they have done so many things, and have uh, said so many words, you can't repeat everything they have said all through that time. But usually we focus a lot on the last words of a person. Because in those last moments, people say the most important things on their hearts. So these were among the very last words that Jesus spoke to the apostles. Which means they must mean a lot to him. They must carry a lot of weight. Unfortunately, today most of us tend to forget these words. Every day, we, every week we come together to worship the Lord. And in this generation, we have put a lot of emphasis on the power of God, the love of God, the, the meaning, the, the plans that God has towards us. So most of the time, we come boldly to the throne of grace. We ask for this, and we ask for that, and we ask for that. And many, many times, we rejoice when God answers our prayers. And we come with even more. We come with even more prayers. But sometimes we don't think about what about him? 
Is there something he is asking of us? As we receive and receive and receive again. Do we also give back to him? That which he would ask of us. If you had someone from whom you received so many wonderful things. But you never give back even one thing that he requires or desires from you. Would that be a balanced relationship? Would that be a fair relationship? But that's what most of us maintain with God. Because many times we don't even think about what he once. But the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter uh, no, in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world may be saved through him. I want to break down this passage. He so loved the world exceedingly abundantly beyond description it's a small word but it indeed carries a lot of meaning it talks about abundancy that is beyond explanation and then it qualifies this love by what he did because of love. He so loved the world that he gave his best. He gave his only begotten son. He gave away the one thing he had in scarcity. He has so many angels. He could have given away a few angels. But he gave the one thing that he could not afford to lose. His only begotten son. And why did he give him? That whoever would believe on him would not perish. That is a simple but very profound statement. It simply means everybody else was a candidate for perishing. The whole world was going into destruction, eternal destruction. And I want to read from the book of Romans. Chapter 3 from verse 10. It just describes to us what the world was like. It says, There is none righteous. No, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They all have turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. 
Now, that describes what the world was. Everybody in the world, even if God wanted to have mercy, there was nowhere he would start because that was the situation as described in the scripture. And the Bible says he is a just judge. He could not just take away our Sins, then he would be unjust. Satan could accuse him of being unjust. So it doesn't matter how much he loved us and and how much he wanted to save us. If he just said, okay, I forget it all, come, let us start all over again. Satan would have accused him of being unfair and unjust. And Satan would have stood and said, then you have to forgive those angels who also rebelled. You cannot judge them and then just pass over and gloss over these. That is why in wanting to save us the father chose to pay the price. If, if, if you care you would give glory to God. He decided he will go all the way to the end. He would pay whatever price is necessary. He would go to all the extent. Now, I, I say this to some people. We have so many people who call upon the name of the Lord. But the Bible says, the people who know their God shall be strong and they shall work exploits. Do you know that most people truly do not know God but they know about him. So they can say things about him but they don't know him intimately. To know somebody intimately you are able to read his heart. You are able to feel the vibes of his heart. Even when they don't say anything, you can tell that mm, they are not happy. That did not treat them well. Tomorrow you may even choose to come back and make amends. But they said nothing. Nothing. But because you know them intimately, you feel their hearts. You feel the vibes of their hearts. You feel when they're happy. You feel when they are not. You feel when they are anxious. So I want you to try even right now and feel the heart of God. He who wanted so, he loved the world so much. He loved us so much that he weighed all options and he saw there was no way to save us and still be a just judge. There was only one thing he could do. Pay the price. Pay the price of saving people who rebelled against him. And yet he loved them so much. He decided, I am going to pay that price. And the price was to give away the most precious thing in him. If you are clapping, clapping, let it be unto Jesus. I said, let us try and feel his heart. Think about his heart when he made that decision. He said, I'm going to do it. 
I'm going to do it. I'm going to give my only begotten son. Just try and understand his heart at that moment. I I can't do it any other way. I've got to pay the price. And I want you to think about Jesus. He was not just commanded to come to the world. To the world. There, there was dialogue between the two. The father had to discuss it with the son. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, My father loves me because I obey him. No one takes my life from me. I give it willfully. And I take it back willfully. So there was a dialogue. And Jesus accepted the challenge. Jesus accepted the mission. He said, I will go. I will go. But when he was coming, in Hebrews chapter 10, the father, it says the father said to him, offerings, and sacrifices he would not accept. So in the Old Testament when men sinned, when people sinned, God gave them the option of offerings and sacrifices so that they may gain forgiveness. But Jesus says in Hebrews 10 offerings and sacrifices you did not permit me. And yet, you have given me this flesh, the body of sin. The thing that makes all men sin against God. The thing that makes men qualify for eternal destruction. You have given the same to me. But you have not given me the way of sacrifices. You have not allowed me to give offerings like you gave to them. Then he said, therefore, as it is written about me in the scrolls in heaven, here I come to do your will, O God. Here I come. In other words, having seen the price of our salvation to the Father, I would like you to see also the price of our salvation to Jesus Christ. He said, you have not given me the way out of sacrifices. The way out of offerings. And yet you have given me this flesh. You want me to do the work to redeem mankind from the power of the flesh. Yet you have not given me the same way out as you gave them. Alright. Here I come to do your will as it is written about me in the scroll. Do you know what that really means? No compromise. No allowances. Here I come to do your will. I will do your will. The Bible says that although he was like us, he was tempted in all ways as we are tempted. Yet he sinned not. Amen. Think about it. How many ways are we tempted? All kinds of temptations. All things we say, but the, the Father understands. Jesus said, mm -mm. He does not. He demands that we overcome sin and the flesh and the world. So Jesus purposed, I'm not going to compromise. 
Now let us go back and examine this scripture in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, Think about it. The Bible says, do not be friends with the world. For the love of the world is enmity with God. And to be worldly is to choose death. So how could God love the world? The only way we can understand that is to know that when the Bible uses the word the world it refers to two things. One, it it refers to the world system. The systems of the world. And those are under the power of Satan. First John chapter 5 verse 14 says that all the world is in the sway of the wicked one. So that kind of world is not what God loved. That one is a fallen world. And it has got its ways of the world. And it is systems of the world. And it is under the power of Satan. And it is condemned already to eternal destruction. That's not the world that is being referred to here. Then what is that world that the Bible refers to that God loved? That one refers to the people, the people of the world, the people in the nations, the people in the cities, the people in your family, every single person that was created in the image of God. God so loved them. God so loved them. He could not tolerate the idea of their destruction. So, we right. could as well say well, God so, so loved every single person in the world. Every single person God loved them. And for them he gave his only begotten son. He paid the price. Not only did he send his son, but he also came and walked with his son every day in everything. He, Jesus was not on his own. He was with his father. One time he said to the apostles, all of you are going to Run away and desert me. You leave me alone. But I will not be alone. For my father is with me. God did not only send his his only begotten son. But he came too. He came too. For you and for me. He was there. The only moment recorded in the scriptures where he departed from his son was on the cross. In the middle of that hour of darkness, when all the sins of the world were piling upon Jesus, the Father stepped back. And Jesus cried and said, Oh, my Father, why have you forsaken me? It was the first time in eternity that the two 
bano. We are separated. For you and for me. It was allowed for you and for me. And it was painful to Jesus. And he cried and said, Oh, Father, why have you forsaken me? These are the costs, the prices that were paid. As you try to understand the heart of the Father, when all the sins were piling upon Jesus, and God the Father cannot associate with any abomination, in pain, he stepped back. And in pain, the Son felt that separation. The son and cried and said, Father, why have you forsaken me? It had never happened in all eternity. But he had to endure it. And the father had to endure it until the price was fully paid. Amen. Hallelujah. Now it says, For God so loved the world. For God so loved every single person in the world. That he is his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him may not perish. But have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world. To condemn the world. To condemn any single person. But he sent him. That we all would be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe in him is condemned already. Already. Now having painted that picture I want, you, I want to take you forward to Jesus coming to visit his disciples after resurrection. And he said to them as my father sent me so do I send you. Whoever's sins you bind shall be bound on him. Whoever's sins you take away shall be taken away. I'm going to repeat that statement. Whoever you choose to take away their sins the sins will be taken away. And whoever you choose to live in their sins, to bind in their sins, they shall forever remain in their sins. Do you hear that? And Jesus said, I will give you the keys of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is lost in heaven. So even sins, when you choose to labor to take away the sins of a person, they shall be taken away. But if you choose to leave anybody in their sins, they shall be bound even in heaven. What am I trying to say? The power to take away sins is in our hands. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And Jesus said all authority in heaven and on earth 
has been given to me. Yesu no agama nti amanyi owinza bonna muguru ne kunsi bimpeeredwa. Therefore. No The word therefore means. Ekigambe kyo no recho. Because of what I've said. Na agama nti kibe kitaza nti oluwachi lichemba gambi. Based on what I've told you. Ngo since na kuchenku gambi. Go. Into all the world and make disciples of every nation. I don't know whether you are seeing the implications. Whatever you bind is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is lost in heaven. The gospel that has been given to you is the power of God for saving people. And if you choose to labor to take away their sins, they shall be taken away. But if you choose to leave them in their sins, they shall remain so. And I come here today to say to you that the Holy Spirit is calling upon, upon us to labor in the field of the gospel. To labor in the saving of souls. Even as we come to church, you pray for rent and it comes. You pray for food and it comes. You pray for clothing, for money, for education. You pray for for visas. You pray for cars. You pray for all the wonderful things. But many, many people do not pray for souls. The majority of us never think of that as a need. Some of us have gone from January to the next January without bringing a soul to the Lord. You believe that? There are people who go from January to December asking God to give them this and give them that and give them that. But the one thing the father so loved that he gave his only begotten. We don't want to talk about. We don't want to think about. We think it's okay. He loves me so much. I'm enough. Even for one person, the father would have given Jesus. Even for one person, God would have sacrificed Jesus. We are living in a generation where we do not care about lost souls. The average Christian doesn't live under a burden to preach the gospel. Paul said, Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Woe unto me. But most of us do not think about that. And yet we do not remember the Bible says that whoever believes in him may not perish. That means whoever believes will not perish. But what about those who don't? What will happen to them? Say it with me. What will happen to them? They will perish. Think about you going to the market and you buy tomatoes because you want to make tasty soup at home. So you buy tomatoes, you buy onions, you buy pepper, cucumbers, because you are dreaming of a sweet meal, a tasty meal you are going to prepare. And you pay and walk away without thinking, is this woman perishing? Is this man perishing? But I have the power 
to take him out of sin. That power was given to me. But I'm thinking of my meal. How many people do you have an opportunity to share Christ with? And do you? I'm, br- I'm bringing a very, very old challenge to us. Most of us don't think about it. The need to share Christ. I hear people when we are praying like here, they lift up their voices and they pray in tongues. And most of us think that Holy Spirit was given to us for the sake of speaking in tongues. Hey, listen. Those are additionals. They are gifts. But the reason the Holy Spirit was given to us Jesus said, yes, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then what? Then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, even in Nangavo. Amen. Amen. What is the purpose the Holy Spirit came to us? That we may be witnesses. That we may show the world that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ is the good news. And the good news is that people do not have to perish. But they can have eternal life. That Jesus has paid the price that everything has already been paid for that is the good news and we are the witnesses in the book of Luke chapter 24 Jesus said in verse 44 he said this is what I was trying to tell you all the time I was with you that everything which was written about me from Moses to the Psalms to the prophets everything had to be fulfilled that the son of man of God had to come and die and rose again on the third day and repentance and forgiveness will be preached in all the world beginning in Jerusalem and you are my witnesses you are my witnesses so even as you ask for visas a car and also everything nice and good the father is saying what about me you asked me to give you and give you and give you what about me when will you give me and the only thing I ask you is souls souls you even work at your place of work you work with non-believers and you can't share your love for Christ you take coffee and tea with them but you can't you can share. You say, oh, they don't want to hear. What about, did you want to hear before you got saved? You did not. 
watu but somebody vengeed ne dared to share christ na kutegeza yesu talk about jesus na gamba ku yesu talk about eternal life na yogera kuloma utagwa and one day uluatuka your heart melted omutima gwe nakugamba bane kanzikirize and you received eternal life na uloko kana ofuna bulamu utagwa amen So what about those people you interact with? Your neighbors, your workmates. The, thing, the people that make your life happen. The people that, that make your life happen. Without them, you couldn't keep on with your life. And today the Holy Spirit is calling us. Do you remember when uh, in the book of Haggai God says you work hard but you earn little You take the little home and I blow upon it it disappears You cover yourself in the night but you don't get warm And he says consider your ways Is it time to think all about your things, your houses, your riches and you neglect the house of the Lord? So is it time for us to come every day we pray for this and that and that and that which are good but we don't care for the one thing that he so loved that he gave his only begotten son. Je, kisera fo kujana sera kino nchini mkama na kitu si chibi si bicha mune ine twera bire chimu chokka che yagala nawe bwayo no mwana we. I remember I read about this man his name was John Knox. Njo kina nasema kama saja chwa John Knox. He was from Scotland. And he prayed to God and said Give me Scotland or I die. Ti Scotland je po bato je pa ne bwemfa. I want nothing else I want Scotland I want to see Scotland saved Or else I die I come and stand before you today as the voice of the Lord saying when will you consistently and regularly live for the gospel Let me challenge God is not condemning us. If you have not won a soul to the Lord since January. It's okay. But we can start a change today. What if you wake up every day? What in the morning? And you say, "Father, thank you for a new day. It's an opportunity to bear fruit." You remember he said you did not choose me. But I chose you. And I appointed you. Actually, the King James Bible says, "I ordained you." I ordained you to go forth and bear fruit and your fruit should remain So wake up in the morning. Thank God for a new day. Thank God for his provision. The food, the protection and everything. Then ask for one thing. Because he told us to pray for the the bread of today. Ask him also. Give me my soul for today. Give me a person to come into the kingdom. Let my path cross with someone ready to confess Christ. Make me a messenger. Make me one that bears good news. Take me to somebody that is desperately needing your help. Give me opportunity to share Jesus. And when you go out, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for that opportunity. Let me tell you something. Many years ago, I was serving the Lord in Luero district. And the Lord said to me, everywhere you go, 
every opportunity you get in season and out of season preach the gospel whether they believe or not share the gospel you never know you may be the one watering another is going to come and harvest don't lose hope because you have shared and the person has not confessed one person sows the other waters another harvest do your part so one day i was in a taxi coming from kampala going to uh, to Nakaseke. And I was seated in the taxi. The Lord had taught us to pray without ceasing. To pray all the time. So I got in the taxi and I began to pray in my spirit to worship. And as I was worshiping and the taxi was moving, the Lord said to me, You see the man next to you? He is due to perish. Unless you share Christ with him. Now that's another, another way of saying it. It's good to preach the gospel. But here the Lord was saying, He is going to perish. He is going to perish. Unless you share the gospel with you. What does that mean? Maybe even that very night he was going to pass away. And God is saying, you can choose to let him perish. Or you can choose to make a difference. Share Jesus. Beloved, let me tell you. I was so intimidated. I thought, I looked around and I thought, when I start talking, they are going to hear me. They are going to hear me preaching. Ah. I said, Lord, next time. Next time, I promise you, I will be ready. But now I'm not ready. And after some, like, three, four, five minutes, the Holy Spirit said to me, you see him? He's going to perish. Unless you share Christ with him. And again I felt, ah, Lord, let's start another time. And I looked at the man, and the man looked at me, and I looked away. I looked at those behind us. I looked at those in front. They are going to hear me. They are going to call me crazy. They are going to think I'm that oh, those nuts that just... And the Holy Spirit said to me, He's going to perish. Unless you share Christ with him. I didn't want to do it. But I thought, what if this man dies and I have not said anything? One day I'm going to meet him before the throne of God. I'm going to be told, you, you are responsible. You know, in Ezekiel chapter 33, God says, if the, if, if, a watchman is put on the tower and he sees calamity coming and he does not warn the people they will surely die but their blood will be on his head but if he warns them and they don't pay heed they will die but their blood is not on him so when that scripture came to me I said this man may die tonight or tomorrow. And if I don't say anything, his blood is on my hand. So I cleared my voice. <clears throat> <laughs> and 
I asked him Namubuza. Are you going to Nakaseke? Namugamba sebo tata nao gena Nakaseke? He said no. Nagata. I'm getting out and he mentioned the place. Naga na tira mvamu mfuwe. He said oh my god. Nagata eh eh. We are soon reaching there. And I have not said anything to him. I said, Can I say something to you? He said, Sure. I said, Jesus loves you. And he looked at me and said, Who told you? <laughs> Who told you? I said the Holy Spirit tells, told me. And he said, how? But by that time I had my platform. I said, you know the Bible says. And I began to share. Then he asked questions. So what do I do? To receive Jesus. And I said, you can receive him right now. He said, no, but I'm going to get out of the taxi. I said, yeah, you can still receive him. And yes, we were getting to that place where he was getting out. I said, okay. Just pray this prayer with me. I said, Lord Jesus. And he looked at me. I said, come on. Repeat. <laughs> and as he repeated Abadam, the people in front Maso, turned and looked at us <laughs> <laughs> and I said mm, ngamba, ngamba. the man is on his way to heaven I don't ngamba. care what you think I still hope that one day <laughs> I will see this man in heaven <laughs> So, what am I trying to convey to you? I'm trying to challenge you to be a witness for God. For Jesus. Every day, leave your home. He intends to get a soul coming to the kingdom. Even if it's just witness, they may not come to the Lord then. Just witness. Mm, that is our work. Witness. And when you come back at night and you have not got a soul, talk to God. Say, Father, today did not go well. I have not seen a soul come to the king. Please, Lord, tomorrow, give me a double blessing. Give me two souls. Please. And you can talk to him because you know how much he loves. You are not asking something too difficult. You are asking according to the will of God. And John said, this is how we approach God. That if we ask anything according to his will, we are sure he hears us. And because he hears us, we know that we have received what we have asked. So you are not asking something too difficult. You are asking something God wants to hear. So what if you had your target? At least one soul per week. week. Every week, at least you can say thank you, Lord. I got my one soul. That means in a month, four souls. In a year, how many? Four times twelve? Forty-eight. Think about it. How many years have gone by without you being fruitful? But now you can be fruitful. You can look back and say, almost 50 souls. I made a difference in 50 souls. 
You would even want to do more. You say, Lord, now give me two souls a week. Do you know this song which says, Thank you for giving to the Lord. Thank you for giving to the Lord. You remember that? How it was Bolt Ray who sang it and he says when he got to heaven he saw this man come to him and say you may not know me but you used to teach our Sunday school and every day you would pray and one day when you pray I received Jesus in my heart how do you feel about that? That day you arrive in the streets of heaven and they are coming one after another. You are 50 of 2023. You are 50 of 2024. You are 50 of 2025. Heaven will become even sweeter. Amen. It becomes sweeter. Let me finish with this scripture. In the book of Daniel. Chapter 12. And it says. And those who turn. Who will turn many. Unto the Lord. Will shine like stars. In God's kingdom. Today, you could live here a changed person. You could live here a messenger, a witness of Jesus Christ. This is all heaven is looking for. And if all of us here left here with a determination, I, I will bring at least one soul per, ma- per week. Nangabo will not remain the same. It will not remain the same. How would you love it? When you come back to church one day and people can testify, it was her that witnessed to me. It was him that witnessed to me. I thank God for this person. For me, those who have been around me, I normally talk about a, a young girl. Her name was Nabu Kenya. She came to me. When when I was seated near her father's shop and she came and we were family friends our families were friends and she was much younger than I she came and said hey how are you I said I'm fine she said can I ask a question I said yes are you happy I said, what kind of question is that? Of course I'm happy. And she said, I am also very happy. Do you know why? She says, it's now four weeks since I received Jesus Christ. And she began to talk about Jesus. She was not preaching to me. She was talking about how beautiful Jesus is. How Jesus has changed her life. How her life is free. After some time I say to her, I'm also saved. (laughs) I had confessed Christ and then thrown it away. And she said, you are saved? Praise the Lord. Tomorrow we are going to church together. He said, I'm going to come for you at home. And true, in the morning, she was by my door. And I couldn't say no. She took me to church with her family. When I was in church, they were preaching about tithing. I wasn't in impressed <laughs> but as we finished the church another girl who worked near 
where my offices were. She began to testify that the, the previous day she had been filled with the Holy Spirit and she spoke in other tongues. said, I feel like I'm walking on clouds. Her name was Jessica. I said, Jessica, do you really mean it? You are filled with the Holy Spirit. said, yes. And you spoke in other tongues. Yes. And nobody taught you the tongues. They said, no, they just came. I said, okay. <laughs> okay. I said, okay. I I slowed down and the, the group was walking. I became the last. And on the street between Katwe and Chivuye. I prayed. I said, Father, I give you my life. No excuses, no conditions. I only ask you one thing. Give me the Holy Spirit. Please. And in one month, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the day I received Christ, that night I had a dream. I was a businessman. I was an executive director in a company called Overseas Trade Connections. The Lord said to me, I can see all your aspirations, your dreams, your hopes, your goals, your targets. But I want to ask you today, will you lay them down today? Because I have a plan for you. I'm going to use you to bring lost souls into the kingdom. I'm going to send you to nations. You'll travel all over the world and you'll bring multitudes into the kingdom. I'll take care of you. I'll be your provider. I'll be your protector. As long as you stay faithful. And that is the life I've lived. Last, no, before the 2019, I went to Malaysia with one of my assistants called Andrew. At the airport, he was refused entry. And when they refuse you, they put you in cells. You wait for the next flight to put take you home. We tried everyone. We tried everything. It didn't work. And then something happened. A person who was in our conference got a phone call from a friend who was like 300 miles away. And this person, this woman, was a personal assistant to the minister, or government minister. And as they were talking, this person mentioned, I mean, this conference with John Melinda. And this woman said, Oh my God, my life was changed by that man's preaching. And he, she was talking about six years ago. She was in a conference. And I was teaching about faith. And she received the word. She began to walk according to it. And one day the Lord gave her a message. To take to an opposition leader. An opposition person. To prepare her heart. That her party is going to win the elections. And she is going to become a government minister. And this government. woman, because of her new faith, she went and told this other opposition leader. And the opposition leader just laughed. The elections came. Their party won. And guess what? She was made a minister. Minister of Education. And who did she pick as, a, as her PA? This intercessor. And it's that intercessor who called. 
and the person who was in the conference with us told her, oh, we are here with John Mulinde. Say, oh, how is he? Please give him my regards. And the other person said, but his assistant was detained at the airport. This one said, why? What happened? Said they, they had some reasons. He's still at the airport. He's waiting for uh, 1 a.m. when the Emirates air flight comes and is going to be sent back to Uganda. That woman hung up, called the minister and told him the situation. And the minister said to her, I instruct you, go to Kuala Lumpur, that's the capital city. And make sure that young man is set free. It was at night that the woman drove from the, the city is called Johobalo. She drove to Kuala Lumpur and went to the airport. And Andrew was in a cell nothing no mattress they were all sleeping on the cement below. <laughs> and this one came and said i am asking for somebody called andrew wavy and they said he's here he said i need him to be freed and i'll take him away amen they called other officers until they reached the top commander of the airport. He said, if the minister has instructed, release him. And Andrew was set free after midnight when the Emirates flight had already landed. And the woman took him and put him up in a hotel. Said, have you eaten? Took him for a wonderful meal. And said, tomorrow morning I have bought a ticket for you. You are flying to go join Pastor Mulinde. What was the connection? Say with me. The gospel is the power of God and to salvation. The gospel will open doors. The gospel will build bridges. The gospel will do it for you. Anywhere you have a need. Because you are engaged on that which the Father cares about. The gospel will do it for you. Because you care about God's heart, God will care about everything concerning you. Amen. May the good Lord bless you so much. We want to take this moment to pray. The question is, will you take the challenge I've given you? Only one soul you have seven days to labor for one soul. And if you are intentional, you pray about it, you are going to live a life of harvest, a life of fruitfulness. And you'll get your about 50 souls every year. What if every one of us is fruitful like that? Pastor, this church will not be enough for us. And then pastors, we don't have to fight telling people, don't go to the other people, they are, they are not good, don't go. When you have harvest coming in all the time, you don't care about that. Hallelujah. Let's rise unto our feet. And let's give glory to God. Thank you, Lord.
I want to lead you in a very short and simple prayer. Put your right hand on your heart. And lift up your left hand. I want you to feel like you are really talking to God. And say to him, Father, I want to hear you say, Father, I did not choose you. But you chose me. And you ordained me. To go forth and bear fruit. And my fruit should remain. Oh Father. Forgive me. Where I have not been fruitful. Forgive me. For neglecting the gospel. For neglecting the kingdom. But today. Today, today, I lay down my life. I will be a witness for Jesus. I will live for the gospel. I will share the good news. I will believe you for the harvest. And I want to pledge a minimum of at least one soul per week. Help me, Father. Teach me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. I will rejoice as I get my my one soul per week. And I know you can even give me more. You said when one soul comes back, in heaven they feast. I want to be a cause of feasting in heaven. Oh Lord Jesus, you gave your life that we should not perish, but have everlasting life. And today, I will go as your messenger, as your witness for the gospel. So help me, God. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. You may take a seat. And you continue to clap for God. A challenge has been given to us. And we can do it. Because of what God does in our lives. Whatever God has done in your life is a platform. Is a platform. We can share the testimonies Mujulize. and bring people to church. Amen. Amen. May God give us courage and wisdom to do that. And I believe by the grace of God we are able to transform this world. Amen. Amen. That is the need of God. God has a need. We have needs and He has a need. Whatever your need is before Him because the Bible says he established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all yet you are here on earth what he needs is a soul and the soul is near you. You can begin with sharing testimonies about Christ, the things which God has done for you, and then you win a soul. I believe God is going to give us that grace. Can't you apostle? Can't you very much? I believe we are going to start with our families. 
Tugenda kutande kana family za fe. The friends. Kwano ja fe. And God will be more happy with us. Nika tonda agenda kuongelo tu sanyo kire nyo. Because that is the greatest commission. Vanga gugwe mwani mungu cha sinze ovunene. Amen. Amen. Remember the Lord is coming back. Jukire nti mkama wafe anatele wukuda. According to what he said. Ukusinzi na kuchaya yogira. Akuma wo. He's coming back with the reward in his hand to give to every man according to his works. So let us be fast in our working because we have a short time left. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are about to leave this place. I'm going to ask. The, the two pastors, Pastor Geoffrey and Pastor, to come and stand with Dr. Kaiga, uh, Brother Joe, and Mr. Muchevi, to give our seed to doctor. doctor. Amen. Amen. Please come. Basabi Muji. And then after. Oliver Numa. You begin to doctor. After. Oliver Numa. To him. Gatmazo Chimua. Gamazo Chimua. Doctor will stretch his hand and pray for us. Dr. Jagoro Mukono Gwat Saviri. I know. I may not call him here to the pulpit. Someone will receive on his behalf and I hand it to him. Then, and then he can even pray for us where he is. A blessing. Amen. Amen. Yes. to fill the fuel. We don't want to leave before getting our blessing. We first go to the total. To fill it with fuel. To the brim. Can we hear that the doctor and you go to Kumbuzi that's for Jerichan. <laughs> I cannot permit that to happen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can pray for us. Amen. Let's rise unto our feet. Mm. 
loving Father, to you belongs all glory and honor. For you are a good God, a faithful God, a dependable God. And your word says that to whoever, whoever shall give and towards the gospel, it shall be given back to them, shaken, pressed over, and overflowing. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that today, even as you have released this challenge to us to go forth and win souls, I pray that you shall release a very special provision into the hand of every man and woman and child in this place. Lord, equip us that we may go and labor in the harvest. I pray, Father, for multiple harvest upon your people. Bless their businesses. Bless their families. Bless the work of their hands. Bless their plans and their goals. And let it be known clearly that, Father, you care for the gospel. And when your people are willing to step out for the gospel, you will bless them and you will increase them and you will multiply them. To you, Father, be glory and honor in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. You may take your seat again. This is my request to the Apostle. We have that great commission as a church of Christ. But we need to chetaga. We still need apart from sensitization. But we need to be trained. There are many people out there who preach. Maybe they lose the, the harvest because there is no campaigning of training people how to do it. As you go back, think about it. How you can send with your group you can send people around the nation to train our young men and women and even old people because with, with preaching or winning souls we need wisdom training how to do it if you are trained it will be very easy so we need a lot of training because many times when I see our people preaching for me I see many mistakes which needs to be cleared especially with you people the apostles because you are God has given you the authority to to dig foundations for the church. So I believe you have it. You have the campaign. This is my humble request. As you go back, just know that what you saw Kampala and everywhere, people can know about it. But how they do it spoils everything. We need training. A lot of training. Because the thing is spiritual. And if you are doing it, you must be in the spirit. Winning souls is spiritual. If you want harvest, you must be in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And many things. Training. We need it, Apostle. And I believe you and your team you have a great plan for that I 
I know that my master is the one who brought you this side. And I ask that when you fulfill the plan, you uh, guide us in how we can do it. It's not only to the youth. Everyone here, you're a witness. Even my mother. Those who visit her as she's making her mark. She can convince them and tell them, go to church. Jesus loves you. It is that simple. Amen. Amen. I want to stop there. That was my humble request, Apostle. Um, we are praying for you. We love you. And I believe many things will continue to happen in your ministry. Amen. Amen. Um, allow me to say, um, also, uh, had invited some of these pastors to go and eat with you. So that you don't sit alone with your group. You know, pastors have their, past, their language, pastoral language. Amen. Amen. So I believe Rich and Zikiriza. that he has a uh, <laughs> I know he has permitted it. God will also help us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to request you to stand up. Amen. Amen. Era, I'm and going to ask Kusaba, Pastor Richmond, Richmond to come and give us a closing prayer. Blessed tonight. Are you blessed tonight? If you know you are blessed, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Me minus food, I'm already full. With the teaching we've got tonight. If only we can obey. And we do that. We will never be the same. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this teaching. We thank you for this impartation. All the Spirit, we cannot do it by ourselves. We need your grace. We need your grace. We need your mercy. We need your mercy to help us, O God. As we are going out, we are going out with a different mentality. As we are going out, we are going with the Spirit to win souls for you. What you need now, the heartbeat of your heart, is more souls. So, Father, give us the grace to win more souls for you. In the name of Jesus, we win souls for you in our offices, in the marketplaces, in the town, wherever we may go. We have that desire to win souls for you. So, at the end of the day, you will say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant enter into the rest what we have learned here tonight we seal it in our hearts with the blood of Jesus we seal it in our hearts with the blood of Jesus and at the end of the day we glorify your wonderful name as we are going now go with us safely and everybody will reach safe and sound we thank God for our pastor here Use him more.
Bless all the, the workers in this church. Use this church for your glory. So your name will be glorified. We thank you for our apostle tonight. The virtue that has come out, refilling back. Fresh grace, fresh anointing. We still stand with the blood of Jesus Christ. And we cover everything with the blood of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus, most powerful name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now, um, I will go out with the apostle. He'll sit in that car right there. And the pastor's wife. Then we we'll go to the drilling station and his car will follow us. I'll ask the elders and the pastors. This is a blessing. Uh, these pastors are always busy. Please use a minute take them to tour this site as we make preparations up there I request you please you can take them for a tour around and then bring them back I request the security team to endeavor to see that the running cars as the pastors and all the other people are crossing the road that you, uh, you control them and maintain them so that the servants of God will cross the road well and then you allow the other cars to continue moving Amen, Amen. Thank you so much. May God richly bless you. Allow me to go Amen. We can leave the service and then ascend it. We don't.